Hello, I'm Jeff Angelo of Mediacom, and welcome to Your First Budget, a series on MC22 that will provide voters with critical information on the budget and economic proposals of the 2016 presidential candidates. This interview series is sponsored by First Budget, a joint effort of the Concord Coalition and the Campaign to Fix the Debt and Mediacom. I'd like to welcome our, our guest to this uh, first edition of Your First Budget. This is Ohio Governor John Kasich. Great. Thanks for coming today. Sure. Thanks uh, for joining us for with these questions. You recently released an economic action plan uh, to grow the economy and balance the budget. Can you give me some details on that particular plan? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a whole series of things, including uh, freezing regulations for a year, also better trade agreements. Um, uh, you know, look, I mean, in, and of course, the meat of it is uh, controlling spending, mm -hmm. which uh, would freeze non-defense discretionary, rebuild uh, our defenses, there'd be an increase in defense, reducing the growth of Medicaid, Medicare, and, uh, and, a, and a, uh, shifting a lot of programs out of Washington back to where we live. And uh, also, of course, incentives for business uh, that where they would uh, be able to bring their profits home from Europe to invest so workers have tools to get higher wages. Also, uh, lower taxes for individuals, 28% top rate, um, which they all fits together. As a former chairman of the Appropriations Committee, you know that all these things have to fit together, and we would get to a balanced budget uh, before the end of a second term. I know you said in a recent debate that some of the other candidates were living in fantasy land with their fiscal proposals. What are some of the things that you're hearing on the campaign trail from the other candidates that concern you? Well, what would you think if I told you that Republicans were going to propose abolishing Medicaid and Medicare and repla replacing it with the tax credit? I mean, you, you know that can't happen. Uh, or, you know, we're just going to have a, t a tax cut that's going to uh, provide super growth, even though when you add all the numbers up, it puts you another 10 or $11 trillion in, whole, in the hole. I mean, these are things that are just, you know, they're not realistic. Or, you know, I mean, we've got... I. I don't have any real objection to a debate about whether we should go to some sort of a consumption tax, but my concern is uh, you go to a consumption tax, you'll never get rid of the income tax. You know the way it works. They don't ever get rid of any taxes. They propose new ones and say they're going to get rid of some. So, uh, But you know, look, I'm more focused now on what I'm trying to do. Just came out with a program to uh, basically eliminate the Commerce Department uh, by redistributing the, the um, uh, the requirements of what commerce does now to other places where it makes more sense ends duplication and we save money and probably will reduce the number of, of total employees that we would need in an entity like that. As you know the trustees of the Social Security Fund say that that Social Security program is on its way to insolvency. What are some of the solutions that you're thinking of to get Social Security back on a long-term solvency. Well, look, I, I've come up with a balanced budget plan and I will release a Social Security plan at some point I used to have one that was ignored in Washington for 16 years, and that plan would have kept our seniors in good shape. It would have changed the starting point for the baby boomers and would have given the younger people 2% uh, of a private account. That plan was ignored, and now 16 years later, we're in a deeper hole. So um, we're probably going to have to raise retirement age, probably going to have to make significant changes to early retirement, probably de-link the amount of money you pay in from the amount of money you get out, and, uh, and change the, uh, the starting point for, uh, for everyone from a wage and price to a, to a price. Now, my describing all that complicated stuff is really going to get the viewers jumping out of their seat. Right. But let me say this. Social Security is vital for our country, and it needs to be fixed before it runs out of money because if we get to the point where you know, we ignore this much longer, the problem is much more severe, and, and it's a lot more difficult to fix. As president, how do you bring politicians together to solve the problem when a lot of times in campaigns it's known as the third rail of politics? Yeah. Well, look, I, I did it in Washington when I was chairman of the Budget Committee and uh, fought to balance the budget, which we did, and cut taxes, and we grew jobs. And the key is getting people to do, to do what they know they should do, but they don't want to do, Jeff. And uh, you understand that, getting mm -hmm. people to take the votes they need to take. And then as governor of the state, we've dealt with entitlements, and uh, I've gone from an $8 billion hole to a $2 billion uh, surplus, a growth of 347,000 jobs. It's all about being able to get people to realize that they're in public office to benefit the public, not themselves. 
Let's switch to health care. Uh, obviously, that is a drain on the overall budget. We have to get health care costs under control. However, people want access to quality delivery of sure, services. they should have it. How do you do both? Well, you know, in Medicaid, we were able to reduce the growth, you'll be surprised to hear, hear this, from 10% to 2.5% in my second budget. Pretty amazing, isn't Pretty it? Pretty amazing. And nobody was taken off the rolls and not one benefit was cut. We reformed the whole program. Um, you know, when, when it comes to health care, the biggest issue we face in the future is being able to change the, the trajectory of the system so that we are not emphasizing quantity medicine. You know, if you were to go to the hospital tonight and you needed two tests, they'd probably give you ten. So we want to change the system to have a more market-oriented system where we are rewarding people for keeping us healthy rather than paying them when we get sick. And it requires a whole other way of looking at the healthcare system, and it's something we're driving in Ohio, and anything we can do in Ohio can be scaled for the entire country. Also, staying on the topic of the budget, you also know as a governor that there are critical in infrastructure uh, investments that you need to make research and development, education, these are all key to a strong economy. These are a shrinking part of the federal budget because they're discretionary spending. So how do we protect those critical investments yet still balance the federal budget over the long term? Well, when we talk about transportation, I would no, I would no longer want to send money from Iowa to Washington where they can play games with it and redistribute it and then send it back at less than what we sent. So why don't we just keep it here? Mm -hmm. Why don't we just not have uh, uh, this program anymore? And the states can send a couple pennies to maintain the interstate, but let's keep our own money, let's pave our own roads, let's use our own rules and regulations. And for example, if we want to toll a road that may have had federal dollars, you should be able to do it. Right now, you can't do it. Uh, what were the other issues you brought up there? Research and development are some of the things well, that we invest Well, R&D tax credits are fine. You can mm -hmm. continue that. We do that in our proposal, the R&D tax credit. And when it comes to education, I'd like to take 104 programs, block grant it into four separate pieces, and send it back to you and to me in Ohio and people all over the country because education, K-12 through education, shouldn't be run by a people, bunch of people in Washington. We can do it better where we live. How about defense? That's often a huge, def a huge debate on the national level of how much we want to invest in defense. Well, we have to have defense. Right. I mean, that's our primary purpose as a federal government is to provide for the common defense. So uh, the problem is that the, the defense establishment is um, very bureaucratic, mm -hmm. um, duplicative, and wasteful. And what we need to do with the Department of Defense is we need to put more resources in, but we need to improve the way in which we buy equipment, the way we develop equipment, and the kind of decision-making process based on the structure that we have. We have almost 900,000 people in, involved in all these decisions, and that makes for a very cumbersome and, uh, and costly way to do things. Let's go to tax reform. There were a lot of, in a recent debate, tax reform plans put out there by the various candidates that were on the stage. How do you reform and simplify the tax code? What is Governor Kasich's plan to do that for the tax bill? Well, for the for personal, I would have a 28% top rate, and we're working on what the other rates would be. Uh, we would keep only the deductions for home mortgage and charitable giving, nothing else, and anything that gets lower than that 28%, uh, you got to figure out how you're going to manage it. I mean, you just can't grow your way out of just slashing taxes. You knew that from being involved here in, in Iowa. Right. But we need lower taxes there. On the corporate side, we have the corporate tax is way too high and we need to let people have an incentive to bring their profits back from Europe and also incentivize investment in machinery and, and equipment so our workers can get, to, can get higher pay. And obviously we are concerned about the overall budget deficit so when well, Mine all adds up. Mine adds, yeah. I mean I have the, the, the program, the only one that I know of that actually puts numbers to this that shows how we get the balance. So you are adding up in your plan saying, look, there would be oh, this yeah. loss we'll, of revenue. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll send you the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, I mean, we don't just put these things out there and they're legitimate and the numbers add up. Also, what I would talk to you about, since you are a governor of a, and you've got a lot of success. They can go on the website and see a lot of it, johnkasich.com. I mean, go on there and take a look. I mean, I've written about 18 budgets, Jeff, over mm -hmm. the course of my lifetime, and they usually add up pretty well. So this right. one will add up as well. And I want to ask you, as a governor, you've got experience with this. Uh, to the voter, it looks like Washington's so polarized and dysfunctional right now that it can't get anything done. So 
as you start to propose what will be some tough budget choices, how do we get people to work together? You just tell, you remind them of what they're there for. I mean, that's what I've done all of my lifetime. We've made dramatic changes in Washington and dramatic changes in Ohio. That's what leadership is. It convinces people that things need to be done and, uh, and that people have to realize they're not in the business, <coughs> excuse me, of politics to take care of themselves, but, to, but for the common good. And uh, it's just a process of showing respect and a process of bringing people together. Part of the problem when we can't solve problems in Washington is it makes people around the world begin to doubt our, our effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, Jeff, once we get a balanced budget, and like I can get the balanced budget, create the climate for job creation, shift a lot of power back, but one of our other big problems in this country is our spirit. Uh, we need to rebuild our families and rebuild our communities. And as we become more empowered, all of us have to work together to renew the very, uh, the very foundation of the United States. I mean, look, you can think about families that are rich, but if the kids aren't loved or if the kids don't feel as though they're a part of things, we know what happens to them. The same is true with the country. We need to bring prosperity, but at the same time, all of us have to work to fix our schools. We've got to work to fight the problem of drugs. We've got to be involved in the local food bank. I mean, there's so many things that we need to do where we live and believe that our actions can change the world, which they can. You can't run America from a president on the way down. You run America from where we live on the way up. I mean, that's the way I think about things. Are there any other topics or issues that you wanted to bring up and wanted to convey to the people watching the program today? Seems like Iowa has a pretty good football team this year. They do. That would be about it. <laughs> Governor John Kasich, thanks, thanks very Jeff. much for joining Thank me. Thank you. This is a program called Your First Budget, a conversation with the presidential candidates about their economic and budget priorities. I'm Jeff Angelo for Mediacom. Thank you for joining me.